Okay, so we are discussing uh, Madhurila 24, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, text 134. Uh, before that, we will say the verse Atmaram. Atmaramascha Munayo, Atmaramascha Munayo, Nirgranthya Purukrame, Kurvanti Ahetu Kim Haktim, Itham Bhuto Guno Harihi, Itham Bhuto Guno Harihi. Who wants to repeat? Aprabhu, can you repeat? Okay, I think I'll start. Uh, this is Mother 24, text 134. Bhakti bole prapta swarup divvide hapai. Krishna guna krishta hoya bhaje krishna pai. Krishna swarup is having he says. Prabhupada translates, one who has attained this constitutional position by the strength of devotional service attains a transcendental body even in this lifetime. Being attracted by Lord Krishna's transcendental qualities, he fully engages in the service at his lotus feet. Okay. Uh, 134. Oh, oh, Okay, so uh, we are continuing the topic, explanation of Atma Ram verse. And uh, the whole idea in the last last class we discussed how uh, devotees, Itham Bhuto Ghano Hari, that's what Mahaprabhu is commenting on. How devotees um, are attracted towards the qualities of Lord Krishna. And because of that, they become liberated. Jeevan Mukta. Liberated while living. That was the point he was making. Uh, another point he is making, he is commenting on that. Uh, bhakti bole prap sarup divya deha pae. Kurvanti ahitukem bhakti mitham bhuta guna hari. As the devotee is attracted to the qualities of Lord Krishna, uh, slowly what happens is, because he is meditating on the qualities of Lord Krishna, he becomes pure and he becomes attracted to Lord Krishna. And what happens is, first, um, his sarupa is revealed. Actually, Bhakti Thakur writes a song. This, this, is, this is a very important verse because uh, there is a point there. Uh, Bhakti Thakur has written a song in Sharnagati. There is a book, Sharnagati, when he is gone. Uh, songs are from Sharnagati. Uh, so, in that book, in the last song, he ends the, that book, Sharnagati, and the last song is uh, Hari Tua Dhare Katopal. It's a very beautiful song. If you happen to see, you can read that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it is said, uh, oh, it is said, sorry. Hari Nam Tua Dharo Katopal. That, oh my Lord, uh, Lord Krishna, oh my, your holy name, how much strength your holy name has, I cannot pen down. Bhagavan Thakur says that, when I, when I want to, uh, he says, when I chant the holy names of Lord, my legs tremble and my heart throbs. And when I, when I want to explain the glories of holy name and the effect of holy name on my mind, on the mind of a devotee, my my pen no longer can write. That's what he says in that song. But another point, the, the most important point he makes in that song is, 
which Bhakti Santa used to often quote to counteract Sahijas and all the sentimental people and in fact Kasko Swamis and all these Apasampradayas is that Bhakti Thakur makes a point there that as you keep on chanting first what happens is first your Sarupa is revealed and then Krishna's form is Sarupa is revealed he, he, he puts it like that uh, because you see Sahajya's what their recommendation is that you 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 attain Krishna I mean you have you have, you have attained Krishna not you attain Krishna <laughs> that's the whole point you have attained Krishna and now by now you will realize who are you slowly but it's just a reverse uh, in our case um, you chant holy names you meditate on his qualities and first he Krishna will reveal your sarupa who are you in connection to Lord? That's what he'll do. And then when your Sarupa is revealed, then he will reveal himself gradually. So why this is important? That's the question. I mean, you might say why this is important. Who cares for that? Whether our Sarupa is revealed or Krishna's Sarupa is revealed. But there, that's the point. Bhakti bole prapta sarup divya deha pai. Now the whole point is Krishna doesn't interact with people who are on material platform. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do that. And that's a basic philosophy. Mm -hmm. So before he interacts with us, he has to reveal our spiritual entity. Otherwise, he cannot do it. Now, you can say he can do anything. He can make impossible possible. Um, there's a technical term used for this. Ghatana Ghatan Patiasi. Maya, illusion is and Krishna both are called Ghatan a Ghatan Patiasi. Ghatan means possible. Aghatan means impossible. So, illusory energy is that which can make possible impossible. And impossible possible. And Krishna is also like that because uh, ultimately there is no difference between illusion and Krishna. Ultimately. Because illusory energy is energy of Krishna. That's how it goes. In fact, if you read Vedic scriptures, uh, Vedic scriptures don't talk about Maya, by the way. If you, if you read Upanishads, uh, they don't really talk about separate illusory energy. They talk about Krishna. And, and Upanishad says, uh, in fact, Gita, which is the essence of Upanishads, Gita Upanishad Gago, uh, Krishna says, uh, I, uh, what's that? Mm. I, uh, yeah, uh, Urdhva Gachanti Sattvastha, Adho Tachanti Tamastha. He says, he says, I elevate people whom I want and, and, and I push people to hell. What, what's the exact translation? I forgot. No, 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 but Krishna says, yeah, he, Krishna says, I, I, I sing them further into hellish life. I do that. Yeah. So, uh, Krishna says, I do that. Now, through the agency of illusion, that's the whole point there. But Krishna is working. Uh, Krishna is in complete control. That's the whole point there. So, this concept of illusion uh, is Maya. This is mostly uh, brought out, explicitly brought out in Puranas. In Vedas, it is understood. It is understood. You don't need to really tell separately, but... Because people can't really understand how God is working. So, okay, here's a lucid energy and there's Krishna and this and that. Otherwise, everything is under control. His control. So, that's the whole point. He, he can do anything. Uh, but the point is, he has his own laws. And he doesn't want to break his own laws. Just as a king. A king makes laws and he himself follows. I mean to say, the... King is the first person who follows laws perfectly, and rest and rest of the people follow second after seeing him. That's how it goes. It's a big responsibility. In fact, it is said in scriptures, it is a it is a king who makes the law strong. Mm. That's all. And that this verse, yadi yadi acharyati shreshta sattva devata raguno. What's exactly? Yeah, yeah, but was it translation in English? Huh? Was Whatever it great men do, common men follow. Common men Whatever follow. great men do, common men follow. Yeah. So, why great men should follow the law? To to give strength to the law. 
because if they follow dharma becomes more strong if they break the law dharma becomes weak so they are following the law is a service to the law that's how it goes that's why they follow this dharma so that's why lord ram he was maryada purushottam and uh, in his whole past time what he did was he accomplished one thing he made dharma strong that's what he did he came to make dharma strong and krishna came to actually uh, prove to show that i am even stronger than dharma hmm. that's how it goes um krishna says i can i can make dharma i can break dharma because i am god he wanted to prove i am god and that's the two two past times there uh, so they appear to be contradictory but they support each other so that's the point he's making uh, uh, krishna wants us to achieve our own identity by our own efforts he wants to see that and he becomes happy in that he helps but uh, the day we achieve our spiritual identity that day he will start interacting with us the day we are free of all kind of anarthas almost nashta braya shobhad reshu he will start interacting with us and when our swarup is revealed that's it so that's why it is said bhakti vale prapta swarup divya deha pai so by the strength of devotion as we become pure our subtle body dissolves and that bhagavatam says uh, so what's that verse can we tell oh yeah when we do devotion our subtle body dissolves couple of days couple of days teaching they will be yeah can do three yeah there's a verse for that it is like one line to you know. so subtle body dissolves so our mind and intelligence it dissolves and slowly spiritual mind and intelligence manifests the mind intelligence of spirit and you get your own spiritual form that is swarup siddhi basically technically this is called swarup siddhi prabhupan mentions that you get your swarupa and uh, what happens in that divya deha pai you get a spiritual form uh now okay fine here's a question why does krishna wants to give us a spiritual form to associate with okay yeah. to associate with him he is spirit supreme spirit to associate with him we have to be acting on spirit otherwise we can't associate him. we can't serve him properly so he wants to give us this gift of spiritual body in fact it is said in spiritual body um from head to the tip of the toe uh that is perfect there is no tinge of sense gratification there absolutely no tinge they, the people who are people who have got swarup siddhi they don't think about themselves they don't think about you don't feel hunger you don't feel thirst you born beyond death you beyond fear and now you can serve god krishna 24 hours you see the whole point okay when does krishna award us spiritual body what's the point where he will give us spiritual body what he wants to see when we work beyond our capacity okay <laughs> you got that point <laughs> you got the point i'm saying now when he work beyond the capacity but can you explain that more when when he sees that we are stretching a material body beyond what a material body can be stretched to okay so then so then he says okay cuz you know you can't serve me with this material body. okay yeah so philosophically you put it i mean to say in a layman layman language we say when you stretch beyond your capacity but philosophically if you were upon if you want to put this uh, the point when our desires to serve krishna exceeds much much more than the capacity than the amount of service you are doing the desire to serve krishna is unlimited. unlimited in comparison to the amount of service you are doing in the in with using this present body so when the desire exceeds the what do we say the amount of service at that point he sees okay my this my devotee he wants to serve me in unlimited ways mm. but this his material body is obstructing him i mean that he sleeps he is feeling sleepy he is feeling hunger he can't do things and he he wants to he wants to do so many things in this material world he wants to accomplish but uh, he can't do it in this material body it's 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 a useless piece of flesh 
how can you accomplish his desires? I mean to say this is like this is like a bicycle and you want to accomplish something <laughs> where you want to fly in a plane, a yeah, spaceship. So you, you need a bicycle and by, through this bicycle you have a desire to go to moon. It's not possible. You, are, you have to have a spaceship. So okay, here's a spaceship, your spiritual body. And now you can fulfill all your desires. So Krishna awards the spiritual body to fulfill our desires. That's the whole point there. That's the whole point. Because he, in his mind, uh, in his mind there is just one thought. I want to please my devotees. Just like in the mind of devotees, there is just a single thought. I want to please my dear master. That's all. So you see, uh, if whether you get spiritual body or not, it depends on you. It doesn't depend on Krishna. Ultimately, it depends on you. And you, you can yourself assess whether I will get a spiritual body or not. It's not a, it's not by chance, uh, like in, it, it's, it's not evolutionary theory by <laughs> chance. Everything happens by chance. No, you don't, you don't evolutionary upgrade yourself in spiritual body. You can know, you can predict. That's the whole point. And you can see how much you're serving and how much desire you have to serve. Just like Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada had unlimited plans. In fact, Srila Prabhupada said, I think, I think in the end, I think 19, I think the mid of 1970s, uh, Prabhupada started speaking to his disciples and you can read conversations that I have many, many plans to serve Krishna. And disciples asked Prabhupada, what kind of plans? And this Prabhupada says, one of the plan is Varnashram. He said, one of the plan is Varnashram. But Prabhupada says, I have many other plans and I will reveal it as the time goes. So, uh, you see, that Prabhupada had many plans and so Krishna says, okay, here is my devotee. And he had many plans, I award you spiritual body. And that's why Prabhupada, Prabhupada did something which is superhuman, I mean, beyond superhuman. You have to be on spiritual platform, otherwise you can't do that. That was evidence. So, uh, that is why Srila Prabhupada says, do as I am doing, think as I am thinking. Uh, think big, Prabhupada said. Prabhupada said, think big. And there is a practical understanding to that. Why you should think big? I mean, to so say you can say, if I think big, but anyway, uh, anyway, I'm not going to accomplish it. You may, you think so many dreams and this, you're a dreamer. <laughs> yeah. People can say like that. You're a dreamer, you're not a practical person. Well, it, it, I mean, to say it's not that we think big and we don't act practically. So there's a, uh, Actually, if you go to management, MBA, there is a golden rule there. You might have heard or not, but there is a golden rule. Uh, so, uh, so, if you go to California, that's a hub, Silicon Valley. Even a kid knows that rule. And the rule is, act, act, uh, think globally, act locally. locally. You know this? Yeah, yeah. Think globally, act locally. It's everybody knows there. So, incorporate. So, that's how we do. We think big, make big plans, but okay, act locally. Or in the in the language of Jiva Goswami, this is management people saying, but you don't want to quote those useless people. <laughs> <laughs> Jiva Goswami, he says, uh, he says, uh, keep your eyes on the moon, but foot on the earth, feet on the earth. That's all. And it's a very practical advice, extremely practical advice. So when that happens, or or in or in words of Bhakti Siddhanta, uh, he used to say that uh, sir, try to serve Krishna 25 hours out of 24 hours. No, yes. <laughs> he said that. Heretic. When that thing will come, or in the or, or in the language of Vishwana Chakri Thakur, uh, he says uh, he says uh, he says. Even one second, even one moment of sleep is a waste of time. Sure. How do you do that? Of course, we have to sleep, but the whole point is the whole sentiment that this, it's a waste of time, sleeping, eating, it's complete waste of time. We have to do, we have to live. But if you can go beyond it, that's the best. Prabhupada and these people went beyond it. So when, when that kind of thinking is there, but that kind of desire is there, then Krishna will give you spiritual body. Now you can assess yourself. This everybody knows himself what's happening inside us, and 
what we are doing. And that time Krishna will give you spiritual body. So, so before you see, you can ask Krishna, Krishna, when you will give me spiritual body? Krishna will ask you, when are you ready? I am ready to give. You tell me, are you ready or not? That's the whole point. Um, and that is why they said in scriptures, who is stopping you to attain Krishna? Who is stopping you to attain Krishna? So, what's your answer? Yes, sir. It's not Maya, by the way. It's you yourself. That's all. We ourselves are self. in Between Krishna and us, we are standing. That's the whole point. And that is how illusion works. Out of illusion, we think between Krishna and I, illusion is there. But actually, illusion is not there. You yourself are there. <laughs> and, and the whole time you are fighting with illusion, but actually, she's not there. It is you. And you have to fight with your, whatever, your, your false uh, image and whatever, you know, false ego and whatever it is. You have to remove yourself from between Krishna and you. And then you can achieve him. And that's what uh, it said. So that's the whole point. Divya prapta surup divya deha pai. Bhakti bale. That's what the point he's making here. Uh, Krishna guna krishna hoya bhaje krishna pai. And when you are on spiritual platform, the more you are in spiritual platform, the more you will be attracted to the qualities of Krishna. That's a test. That's basically the test. You lose attraction for material world and you will develop attraction for spiritual world. Now, okay, here's a question. If somebody will can ask you, okay, you know what? What's the problem? I'm attracted to both. Krishna and spiritual world. Spiritual world and material world, both. So what's the problem in that? I mean to say, take best of both worlds. <laughs> That's the whole point. Uh, what's the problem in that statement? Because um, as long as you have mature desires, that Krishna will deal with you intimately. So you, 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 okay, can't, you okay. can't really do that. The sadhya is sort of trying to do that. You can't actually have a relationship with Krishna. Okay, yeah, that's I accept your point. But my whole point is, um, uh, yeah, I'm asking a different question here. Okay, Krishna can't interact. So, but that person is saying, okay, fine. Um, but I am falling away, I am attracted to Krishna, I am attracted to material world and in my theory, uh, Krishna will interact with me. That, that's what Apasamprasana people say, that's in my theory, so, but we have to tell them that's wrong. One is light, one is darkness. So how can you be in both? Okay, uh, you see the point, uh, you see the point, uh, this is not logic, this is an analogy. And analogy is not logic. And that we have to be careful, otherwise it goes in fallacy. You got my point? Yeah. So, that's how it goes. So we don't really quote this. We, we can quote this, but we have to support by our logic there. <coughs> you, uh, you got my point? Yeah. So, th there is a logic in this, darkness and light, but then you can give any example and then put your, yeah, theory. Put your own theory in that. So you see, I need a logic which, which breaks this whole theory. Krishna demands avya vicharini bhakti. Means okay. Anand. Avya vicharini bhakti. Avya vichari means chest, chastity. It means exclusive. Why? Why? Why he wants? I mean, so, so somebody can say Krishna is envious of us or what? Sorry. Krishna is envious of us. He is enjoying and he doesn't want us to enjoy. I mean, it's, why does he want to stop us from material enjoyment? He can give us both, material enjoyment and spiritual enjoyment. Because, 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 because he gives us material enjoyment, he'll give us a material body, and we have to suffer over the fact that he's old age and maybe the body. Well, he, 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 can, he can make material body. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he can do anything. So. Pleasure <laughs> is a misconception. Okay. Uh, pleasure is what? A uh, misconception. In this world? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a misconception by reality. <laughs> I would say this person doesn't understand what is spiritual and what is material. No, that's the whole. Po that's my whole question. What is his understanding? Why he doesn't understand? What's the true understanding? That's my whole question. 
That's that basically I'm asking. What is the understanding there? Why should we stop sense gratification? Okay, here's a question. Simple question. Why? There can be many reasons, but what is the most important reason related to this verse and the context of this class? So, that, that sense gratification is less, but if you want prema, you have to have... No, why? That my whole question, why? Why doesn't Krishna give you prema unless you stop sense gratification? What's the problem with sense gratification? If we do a little bit, okay, fine. I'm not going to Times Square Park and I'm not going to, you know, Las Vegas and... Okay, a little bit sense gratification. At least Krishna allow that. Krishna says no. Zero percent. Then you are coming to spiritual world. Now that's what he wants. Why? Even not little bit. He can't, he can't tolerate. Because it makes you forget Krishna. Uh, okay. Uh, that can be said. Sahijiyas do sense gratification and they remember Krishna while doing sex. While doing sex they are remembering Krishna. Oh. <laughs> that's how they do. Yes. Yeah, that's how they do. They are like that. But, but of course they are not really remembering Krishna. They are imagining Okay. Okay. Yeah, there can be many answers for that, but you know what? Krishna actually, you know what? We hate sense gratification. It's not that we don't do, we hate it. Why? Because sense gratification is is exp if we do sense gratification, it's like we are actually blaspheming God. It's a blasphemy of God. Why? Because, because we are trying to say, Krishna, you are attractive. This is this was the point here. Attractive, his call, your qualities are attractive, and material world qualities are also attractive. So you are putting material world at the same level of Krishna. Krishna. You see, you are equating Krishna with material world. That's a big blasphemy. Natat samas avidekas chavidyate. There is nothing equal and nothing greater than him. You see the point there? So you are, you are in other words saying, Krishna, I like, okay fine. So you are saying, I like Coca-Cola very much. It's so tasty. And the same taste is there in stool. <laughs> it's absolute blasphemy of Coca-Cola. <laughs> you are actually blaspheming Coca-Cola. You are not praising stool by the way. <laughs> you are saying Coca-Cola is a stool. And that's the whole point. You are saying Krishna, your quality is so attractive. It's Ittham Bhuta Guno Hari. But then we do sense gratification. We are saying qualities of material world are also attractive. That's why we are doing sense gratification by the way. Because we are getting attracted. And this is pure blasphemy of God. And his qualities. We are trying to say that your qualities are like stool. Because this material world is a stool. And we attract into it. And that is why uh, you will, if, if, until unless we do sense gratification, Krishna is not going to give us spiritual body. He's not going to give us love of God. Because how, how can you do that? You are first blaspheming him. And then you are giving love of God. Both are contradictory, isn't it? You can't do that. If you love somebody, you don't blaspheme him. You can't do that. It doesn't make any sense. In fact, when you love somebody, Totally opposite thing happens. When you love somebody, you, you actually protect that person from blasphemy. That's how love works. Love is a thing uh, which uh, Chaitanya Chaitanya explains, by the way. Everything is here in this book. It explains love is a thing, is a phenomena where you try to hide the faults of your beloved. Envy is a phenomena where you try to reveal the faults of that person. And propagandize it. Am I right? That's that's envy. So that's how it goes. So that's sense gratification. So that's why we hate sense gratification. Any time uh, you do sense gratification, you are actually blaspheming God. You are saying Krishna, you are stupid. Mm. That's all. You could also analyze that that we're um, taking Krishna's property and using it. Itself, so it's also, it's like a okay, yeah, yeah, that 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 is Upanishad logic giving is Upanishad thieves. But you know what? Yeah, I, did, I told you there can be many answers for that. Yeah. 
but that thing uh, i mean to say okay it 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 creates like a guilt in us when we do sense gratification i am a thief but of course i mean this is much powerful logic and this is like you're mm-hmm. blaspheming him <laughs> you're no longer a okay I, I, okay he's a big thief i'm a small thief okay let's <laughs> we can do but this is crazy if you really think you are saying like, krishna you are stole and it's bogus then then we are, and we are chanting hari krishna yeah. then it doesn't make any sense it says oh it's 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 almost like this person who was that the mahaprabhu who who came and then he was speaking mayava then uh, mukundat Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mukund. He used to go to Mayavadi's. Mukundat used to go to Mayavadi's and then he used to come to Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu said, "See, you know what you are doing. You, you, when you come to us, when you come to me, you are actually bowing down to my feet. When you go to Mayavadi, you are slapping me." Oh my God. So what kind of devotion is this? That's what is sense gratification all about. And that's why, if you understand this, you will never do sense gratification. Never. It's impossible to do. Yeah, what are you saying? They can also say uh, the material world are also part of Krishna as well. So. Yeah, yeah, Shri Prabhupada says material world is like Krishna's stool. Oh my God. Prabhupada <laughs> said that. <laughs> material world is like Krishna's. Stool. Material world is Krishna's stool. So we are interested in stool of Krishna. <laughs> That's what Prabhupada says. Who said that? Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada said. Yeah, material world is Krishna's tool because the same question they were asking, material world is also part of Krishna. So <laughs> Prabhupada said, okay, material world is Krishna's <laughs> tool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's there. Yeah, it's there in the conversations. If you read conversations, that's interesting. By the way, read conversations; it's very nice. So uh, that's how it goes. Um, even Krishna is not interested in material world, by the way. And it's it's see everything is reflection of spiritual world, am I right? Yes. Yes. So even here, are you interested in your stool? No. So then, why Krishna should be interested in his stool? That's the whole point. It's the same thing. He's not interested. If our master is not interested, we are not interested. We are servants. That's it. the master whose property it is. He is not interested in this. He is disgusted with this. So we are we are servants. We have to follow. Him. That's all. Because it is disgusting. That's right, of course. Okay, so uh, yeah, actually, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Sanatan Goswami. Uh, Sana, he, he said uh, that uh, when he met him in Puri, uh, he said Krishna's. Oh, sorry, not Puri. Uh, this Varanasi. He came. He left everything and he came to meet Mahaprabhu. Mm-hmm. He, he, he was released from jail and prison. He came to Mahaprabhu and Mahaprabhu. As soon as he met him, he said, "Krishna saved you from a stool pit." Mm-hmm. Of this material world, so this is nothing but stool. I mean, to say. and that is why you you see people who like matter. Krishna makes sure that they will they will they will have a body of matter, they will eat matter, they will shit matter, mm-hmm. they will think of matter, mm-hmm. they will be born of matter, and they'll die in matter. Okay, you like matter. Okay, fine. I'll give you matter to such an extent that you'll really actually become matter. And now you see what happens. That's what Krishna's style is. That's what his style is. If you want something, he'll give you completely. If you want to, if you want to do something wrong, okay, I'll make you, I'll make you such a person that you you will be a Machiavellian. You know Machiavellian? Mm. You'll be the you'll be the worst terrorist in this whole world. The worst person. You want to become bad? Okay, I'll make you the, the best of bad people. <laughs> That's what I'll do. That's what Krishna does, and then, and then you realize yourself. Okay, what's the problem there? Then you change your will. But if you want to, if you want spirit, he says, okay, I'll make you spirit. You'll be born of spirit. You will do spirit. You will eat spirit. You will do spirit. You will walk spirit. You will have spiritual body. You will have spiritual word. You will have spiritual people. So it all depends on us. But the whole point is, we have to have a proper conception there. So okay, so Chaitanya Prabhu is commenting like this on Itham Bhuto Guno Hari. That's another point he's bringing from that of sense gratification and spiritual form. You see, you see the connection there. Why he's commenting? He's bringing many points. He's commenting on this verse, and that's why this whole chapter 
if you read nicely there are so many deep insights into this chapter actually he he's, he's not just explaining atmaram verse just to uh, maybe sure. just to show off a defeat sarvam khatashare or it's that's not the whole point there yeah, yeah it's not a scholarly rendition only there are deep insights and he wants to tell us he wants to teach us that bhagavatam has deep insights if you really dig into swadu swadu pade pade that's the whole point if you dig into it you will have and that's an insight here we get so now uh, whatever insight chaitanya mahaprabhu gives he he backs it up that's what his style is that's what the style of devotee should be whatever point you make you should back it up so he is quoting verses uh, from shrimad bhagavatam and this is a verse there uh, uh, nirodhasya anushayanam atmana sah sakti vi muktir hitva anyatha rupam swarupena vivasthita famous verse yeah. at least last two lines muktir hitva anyatha rupam swarupena vivasthiti this is a definition of liberation uh now this is this is interesting the living entities and other potencies merge into mahavishnu as a lord lies down and winds up destroys the cosmic manifestation liberation means being situated in one's eternal original form after giving up the changeable cross subtle body that is liberation so this definition is important because uh, you see there was a discussion between chaitanya mahaprabhu and gadadhar pandit Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was not a devotee. Before revealing himself as a devotee uh, or as a god, whatever, uh, he was known as Nimaya Pandit, and he he was he was complete uh, he was completely an atheistic person and uh, completely into scholarly erudite logic and nyaya, and used to blaspheme Vaishnavas. By the way, <laughs> before he he revealed he started his sankirtan movement before he went to gaya and he took uh, like so called diksha from and then he's completely changed suddenly he changed he was blaspheming vaishnavas he was at east and uh, whenever people, whenever gadadhar pandit shri vas thakur they used to see Maha, nimaya pandit coming from a street from a from any street they they used to change their way they used to go another another way because then mahaprabhu will nimaya pandit will meet and they will he will criticize vishnu and vaishnavas and then he will defeat them so there was one discussion on mukti by the way with gadadhar pandit and mahaprabhu asked him okay what is mukti and because gadadhar pandit he was also at that time in logic and grammar he said okay according to yoga shastras mukti means uh, mukti means a cessation of all miseries that's what mukti is and cessation of all pain and miseries that's what is the aim of patanjali so chaitanya mahaprabhu there says okay this definition is nice but it's not complete because liberation doesn't just mean cessation if you say liberation is just cessation of miseries and pain then actually you are making liberation a painful process you see you say it's a cessation of something and and cessation itself is not a a joyful concept you are trying to cease something am i right you are trying to destroy something what kind of definition is this so mahaprabhu says no real definition of devotion should be positive and not just negative and that is why this definition is important from bhagavatam they are both positive and negative muktir hitvan anyatha rupam liberation means uh, is leaving hitva means prabhupa writes giving up giving up your your illusory form that is material form and identification and swarupena vivasthita and being established into your swarupa your original form that is spiritual identity now it becomes complete okay here is a quiz where does bhagavad gita tell you this and everything should come from bhagavad gita mm, no both living material form uh, where does bhagavad gita uh, gives this concept of leaving material form and taking spiritual form that uh, hmm. 
a nice way. So. I see, see, there's one thing. Whatever you think, it should come from Bhagavad Gita. Always. Because why I'm telling you this? Because when you preach, if you quote Bhagavad Gita, you win the game. That's all. Because everybody accepts Bhagavad Gita worldwide. Everybody. At least in even Western world, if you say yeah. it's from Gita, people understand Gita. It's a book. They're their book. <laughs> No, uh, yadi, okay. Yadi man, uh, okay, you can quote that. You can quote that. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's so. one that says, um, such a liberated person is not attracted to the material sense pleasure, but is always in trance, enjoying the pleasure within. In this way, the self realized person enjoys unlimited. Oh, what's, what's this verse? So he concentrates on the screen. It's 521. Yeah, what's this in Sanskrit? I just. Uh, uh, Hmm. Okay. To, to the material world and then yeah, unlimited pleasure. Okay. okay. Uh, that words can be there. Yeah, both words. But you know, I I, I want the exact words where it says, not about pleasure, not about time of death. It just simply says spirituality means. To be situated in your own form and leaving this form. Now, is there any this exact to the point definition? Because because when you talk in material world, when you define spirituality, all these people think of spirituality as you know abstract and nonsense and these yoga yoga clubs. And when you talk to them, you have to define. Okay, this is a book, Bhagavad Gita. It's a universal book and it talks in a very logical way. And here's a definition. That's and Krishna says that, by the way. Okay, uh, I'll tell you. Uh, I forgot the number, but I can tell you. We can. Also, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the verse, the the line is the line is Swabhav Adhyatma Uchchate. Swabhav Adhyatma Uchchate. Can you just? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you can you just find it? Yeah, in the folio. Swabhav Adhyatma Uchchate. It's a beautiful. Small statement, very deep, quoted by all acharyas. How do you spell that first word? Swab how? Um, Swab how? Yeah. Akshara Brahma 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 What's a uh, so this uh, was it 8.3? Hmm. Okay. So here this line Sobhava Adhyatma Uchate, the comment is uh, so what does Prabhupada write there in the meaning? The Supreme Personality of God said the indestructible transcendental living entity is called Brahman and his eternal nature is called Adhyatma, See, the yeah, self. Yeah, yeah, there. Action pertaining to the development of yeah, the so, body. so that's it, yeah. Prabhupada says, the eternal nature of living entity is called Adhyatma. That's how you define spirituality. Spirituality is trying to help you attain your original spiritual form. Sabhava Adhyatma Uchate. You change, uh, you go from material Sabhava to spiritual Sabhava. That's how it's defined as. And it's it's often commented, this, this specific line from Bhagavad Gita. So bhava dehatma uchate. So bhava means, so means own, bhava means, so means sarupa, bhava means emotions. Spirituality brings out the emotions of your own sarupa, of your own sarup siddhi, of your own spiritual form. That's what it does. You can quote this, this is an excellent uh, line there. So that's from Bhagavad Gita. It's the same what Mahaprabhu is talking here. Okay, so so that's 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 one point which I was making. Now he goes to another point. He says, uh, okay, let me just. Uh, uh, Krishna bhair mukta doshe maya hoyte bhai. Krishna on mukta bhakti hoyte maya mukta hoy. So Krishna is coming to ask me. Says, uh, Krishna bhair mukta doshe maya hoyte bhai. Oh, this is over. Okay, fine. I'll ask you. Okay, so he's making a point there. 
when a person doesn't get attracted towards Krishna, what happens? And when he gets attracted to Krishna, then what happens? Now he is trying to compare that. So, Krishna Bahirmukh Doshe, okay. This word, uh, he says, when you have a fault, and the fault is Bahirmukh. Bahirmukh means, Bahir means external, and Mukh means uh, you are seeing, uh, not within yourself, but or not maybe uh, towards the service of God, not towards God, but uh, other things uh, which are actually in material world, that, that's how it goes. You're not looking within self, you're lo- looking outside. Bahir mok, bahir means outside. You're looking outside the window. That's the whole point. Mm. You're not looking at the real stuff. So that's bahir mok. This term bahir mok is used uh, technically many times uh, to actually give a meaning that, uh, that you are living an external life, living a superficial life. You are involved in externalities. That's how it goes. Not the real stuff. Vedayam Vastavam. Atravastu Shivadam. You are not dealing with Vastavam. So, people who are Bahinmo, this dosh is fault is there, who look everything disconnected from Krishna. That's basically Bahinmo. What happens is, okay, here is a, here's a verse. Okay, from where, uh, is there any verse in Upanishads where it says uh, about this concept of Bahirmuk. Verse from Prabhupada quotes that. Oh, it's a famous. Dvasopurna, Sayujya, Sakhaya, Samana, Vetam. Yeah, yeah, two words sitting on a tree. You know this? No, no, no. Dvasopurna, Sayujya, Sakhaya, Samana, Vetam, Drikshe, Vasanti. Hare Krishna. <laughs> yes, pronouncing the same words. <laughs> so that it's a it's a famous verse. It, you know, on a tree, two birds are sitting, oh. and one bird, Dva Suparna. Suparna means birds, and one bird is enjoying the fruits, and another bird is simply watching. And that's 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 a concept of Bahirmuk from Upanishads. He's not looking towards the other bird. That's a concept. Uh, uh, Shankara used to quote this verse. Uh, this verse was a pet of Shankara's. Mm-hmm. He used to like this verse a lot. That was Upanishad Sahaja It is from which Upanishad? From Mund- Mund- Upanishad. It is from Mundaka and, and also Shweta Shatur. Yeah, both of them. It comes from both. So when you are when you are in that habit of not looking towards Krishna but looking towards this material world and this fault is there. And what happens? Maya hoite bhai. Then you develop fear. fear. Now that's interesting. One becomes conditioned and fearful due to influence of Maya. Maya. Now, can you remember of a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam for this? Maya Mutiya. Yeah. Maya Mutiya Agni Shata Petas Vipario Smriti Tan Maya Ati Buddha Pachetam. This is said by, I think this is 11th canto and it is said by one of the Navigandar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you, when you, when you are not, when you seeing everything disconnected from Krishna, you become fearful. That's the whole point there. And it is, okay, why? Why it's like that? When we disconnected from Krishna, we become fearful. Why it's like that? Why? Somebody can say, I don't know. Yeah. You become fearful. Why is it like that? Because the living entity is small and Maya is bigger than okay. overcome. Okay, can you give a very practical some example? Some practical thing. That's okay. But then you have to explain what is Maya and this and that and that. That's all point. Yeah, I got a point. If the child leaves, the father is stuck outside somewhere anyway. It becomes fearful, yeah. Okay, you see, you see, uh, you see. I'll give you example here. I'll give you example. Suppose now you are staying here, all of you. Yes. And suppose there's a legal case on you, on NYC Harinam Center, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you're trapped in a legal case. So you will have a lot of fear, am I right? 
we are completely at least managers will be completely panicked <laughs> people who are not managers they'll okay fine you know <laughs> doesn't matter if it crashes we'll go to some other place no problem but people at least who are managing they'll be panicked out <laughs> what's happening there's a legal case and this and that now you have a lot of fear now suppose then uh, you have a lot of fear and suppose out of blue one phone call comes and who is calling trump and trump says you know what i was i was looking on the web and you people are good and i am with you and no problems whatever happens i am with you your fear instantly vanishes all right instantly it vanishes everything is same still legal cases there still you are in the same place everything is same just a phone call from trump i am with you it finishes your fear that's what is krishna consciousness if you think krishna is there with me everything will be the same it doesn't change but you will not be fearful that's what goes and that's what that was the difference between shila prabhupad and and jew temple giriraj maharaj and all these people they were so fearful mr nayar and this and that and prabhupad came to juhu prabhupad says i am coming no problem Yeah. 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 Prabhupada, <laughs> Prabhupada came and he didn't do anything. I mean, he didn't do anything. He just told, he, he just said to Giriraj Maharaj, and he, they were sitting, and he said, "There's a conversation." He said, "You see, so many demons came, and Krishna killed them." Wow. And he says, "We have faith in Krishna. Nothing will happen to us." And Giriraj Maharaj again, "Okay, no problem. <laughs> Everything <laughs> finished." Uh, what? I, it, it was just a statement. That's all. It, it doesn't. That's the whole point. It's. it comes down to faith that krishna is there with me and you know no longer fearful that's all that's how uh, so that's the whole thing there are people who are with their faith and conviction their fear immediately goes it just vanishes and uh, that's why prabhupad that prabhupad had that faith and conviction prabhupad used to inspire people like that that's why it says krishna bhair mok doshe maya hoye te bhai now Now, is there any verse from Bhagavad Gita which says uh, people who are not Krishna conscious, who are not connected to Krishna, they are full of fear? From Bhagavatam we get, "Bhayam dhuti abhinav sita sya." Any verse from Bhagavad Gita? You see with the point. By I mean, I'm a little I like Bhagavad Gita a lot. That's why I come back to Bhagavad Gita. Uh, we should uh, Bhagavad Gita uh, people. people discuss less from what i mean uh, there's one verse that um there's that one achita sarva yogani mat prasad achita sarva yogani mat prasad prasad okay yeah which says that you cross over all obstacles and yeah. you like i i grace if how are you don't listen to me there will be law so that sort of that's uh, sort of but is there any direct statement there that's what i want there Oh, actually, today morning we were reading that. Prabhu was reading from where he was reading that purport. Uh, uh, it was from Bhagavatam. Uh, anyway, so uh, the last line it says, you know, about Bhagavad Gita. Today he said, uh, Prabhu Prabhu says the uh, when Prabhu gets Bhagavad Gita in the entire world, that's he's very dear to me. When he preaches about, there was a statement. Yeah. There was a statement there. Let's let up. Okay, I'll take that. Okay, fine. So what's that? Where Krishna says, these people who are not connected to me, they're full of fear. Always full of fear. They'll never come out. Oh, of how about that verse that goes on? Let's see, 66. Nasti budi yogi tak se nasti. Nasti budi yogi tak se nasti. Uh, that uh, that really says that. That yeah. Moga moga karmano moga dhanam vichita sa. Rakshasi vasthita. Okay. Uh, but, but that is uh, all the endeavors are defeated and. Uh, But I want to say, I want to put a, put a point that they're full of yeah. fear. The, the one that I read, the translation is one who's not connected with the supreme mm-hmm. Krishna consciousness cannot mm-hmm. either mm-hmm. can have neither transcendental intelligence nor a steady mind without which it's mm-hmm. impossible to see. And how can there be no okay. peace without peace? Okay. Okay. This verse we can quote. Yeah, yeah. This verse we can quote definitely. <laughs> <laughs> we can quote that. Nasti buddhi rakta se na chayakta se bhavana. Uh, what's that after that? Na cha bhavya ta shanti, shantas se kuta sukham. That we can. One is not connected to Krishna, 
he is he can never have peace uh, he's, he's, if there's no peace, how can there be any happiness? What's this verse? Uh, 6, what's that number? That's 266. Uh, 266, okay. Uh, this verse is good. There's another verse uh, that Chintam Apiriyamayam Prelantam Upashritaha, 16th chapter. Divine Demonia, Krishna says, These people who are not connected to me, Chintam Aparimayam. Aparimayam means immeasurable Prabhupada translates immeasurable they are in immeasurable anxieties and 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 Krishna is really on their case and Krishna says Krishna says how long the anxieties will go oh my God. till pralaya they will be full of <laughs> fear and anxieties <laughs> Krishna just is on the case mm-hmm. why because they have taken shelter of yeah, this material word and they are not connected to me, they are not taking shelter of me. That's the line quoted. Chintama mm-hmm. Pereya Pralyantama Pashita. And, and uh, 1611. Yeah, 1611. Yeah, that's a very nice line. So that's that's the evidence from Bhagavad Gita we can quote. I mean to say these people, uh, Krishna says they have no hope. Uh, that's Krishna's conclusion. Even in their dreams, Krishna says in uh, 11th Canto to Dhav, even in their dreams, these materialists, they cannot imagine what kind of happiness devotees experience. Oh my Even in their dreams, they cannot imagine. That's Krishna's conclusion. Krishna also says to Dhav that these people who are not my devotees, they are like they are like crying for help uh, in the forest fire. Oh who listens to them? Nobody cares for them. That's what he says, nobody will help them. So that's the whole point. Krishna bhairmuk doshe maya hoite bhai. Uh, the first and that's the whole point if you become disconnected to Krishna the first symptom is fear and if you become connected to Krishna the first symptom is fearlessness and where does Bhagavad Gita say that so the first yeah first of the divine qualities abhyam sattva samshuddhir the first divine quality is fearlessness that's the first symptom and from that fearlessness is born all other qualities the base of all even goodness in this material world is fear. Whatever good you see in this material world, it is born of fear. That's all. And whatever and the and the logic is what is what is the cause? That is the effect. So what is born of fear that shall end in fear. It's simple as that. What is born of matter that shall end in matter. That's how it goes. Cause and effect. So even the goodness of this material world. Whatever they think, Prabhupada says all philanthropy and all this. It is actually born of fear. Uh, see, all these philosophies, all these, if you read all philosophers, Western philosophers, like for example, Nietzsche. You take Nietzsche. Nietzsche is like, Nietzsche is like their whole... Acharya. Uh, Acharya. It's, it's their Acharya. <laughs> it's, uh, Nietzsche and Schopenhauer. And all their philosophies are born out of fear. Nietzsche was Nietzsche was really frustrated of this material world. He was uh, he came to some good conclusion, but he was completely frustrated. But he was not connected to Krishna. What happened? His end was in frustration. His philosophy was born of frustration. It has end in frustration, and he became mad. By, by the way, Schopenhauer he 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 also became really psyched out after some time. Uh, oh, yeah. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you read about him, Schopenhauer. All these big philosophers, uh, who was that? Uh, Burton Russell, a contemporary philosopher. He, he was a big philosopher and this and that. But in the end, uh, Burton Russell and this, uh, who, was, who was he working with? Uh, so, he, so he was working with Northfield Whitehead, UK uh, uh, philosopher from UK, mathematician. Both of them were working on a project and this. The, their whole project was born of, of a frustration that these materialists, they are not, uh, yeah, they wanted to put everything in logic. That that's what they wanted to do. Uh, they were mathematicians and philosophers. Well, the whole project got frustrated. Uh, there was a person, uh, Godel. You know Godel? Kurt Godel. He he came. He was a mathematician from Boston, actually from New York. Uh, he he came, and these people were trying to prove that. Uh, that physics is based on mathematics and mathematics is based on logic and logic is based on one theorem they wanted to reduce everything to one theorem theory of everything by the way they wanted to do that 
and they did it actually you know what they want so so they started so they started proving 1 plus 1 2 okay let's prove 1 plus 1 2 through logic and let's get a theorem which can then prove everything and to prove 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 they devoted 100 pages in their book that's how they proved 1 plus 1 2 they were working like that day and night and and they, they were saying we will capture everything in one equation that's what theory of everything is there so okay that was a project now this guy Kurt Gordel he was a friend of Einstein he, he, Einstein was a little proactive this Kurt Gordel he was a little timid he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't used to come out and he did a work and that work proved that you cannot reduce math into logic he proved through logic that you cannot prove math by logic he disproved logic by logic that's what he did and these people were finished the whole project stopped you see the point you see any anything in this material world it's born of exploitation and fear and that's where Krishna says a verse in Bhagavad Gita whatever endeavor should be there it should not be born of fear and uh, frustration what's that verse is a verse this is a verse okay okay I'll tell you trans translation what Prabhupada writes exact Prabhupada uh, I'll give you a hint there uh, Prabhupada says, leave this and take shelter of me. Devoid of dash dash, take shelter of me. Devoid, that's it. Is it uh, uh, Huh? What's that? Uh, Vitaraga bhaya prodha man maya mamu pashrita. Vit, vit means leave. Leave attachment and fear and then take shelter of me because if you take my shelter just out of fear and attachment and your own old, old speculations then you'll end up in fear and attachment you should take my shelter unalloyed you take my shelter for me that's all to serve me there should be no other cause uh, so Krishna says there okay so that's the first line Krishna bhairmuk doshe maya hoite bhai and then Krishna Kaya Swami says, Krishnon Mukh Bhakti Hoyte Maya Mukt Hoye. You see, um, this word, uh, these yogis and jnanis, they, they use the word Antarmukhi. You know, you have heard this word Antarmukhi? It's, it's very famous in India. They say, they, uh, like in Western world also, go inside yourself. Isn't it? They, they say a lot. Actually, they, this word they have borrowed from, from Mayavadis. Yeah, yeah, go within yourself. Uh, the, uh, I to say. Yeah, you, you can say that. There's a sense to that, but then I mean to say, it's very abstract. What is this? Go within yourself. Where should I go? <laughs> you can tell that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this word antarmukhi is there, which Mayavadis use, because for them everything is illusion. But we don't prefer that word. We don't prefer that word. We prefer this word, Krishnon Mukh, Sevon Mukh. You, you have to not to go within yourself. Go, if you want to go somewhere, go in the service of Lord. That's why this word we have invented, Gaudiya Vaishnav, Sevon Mukh. We invented that. I mean to say Vaishnav Sampradaya. To fight Mayavad, this word of Antar Mukh. So all these Vaishnav say, oh, you want to go inside? Where do you want to go inside? Why do you want to go inside? Everything is reality. Yeah. You're fools. We are inside, outside, we are everywhere. And we use everything in service of Lord. That's the philosophy. So the very word antarmukhi, the go within oneself, that is having connotations of mayavad. That's there. And whole West is completely polluted by this word. It looks, it sounds nice. Go within yourself, it sounds nice, but it's all mayavad if you really think. And Avanachar is very dead against this word antarmukhi. Okay, we are Sevon. That's all. Krishnon Mukha, you can say Krishnon Mukha. That is why uh, Bhakti Sandha used to call us as Krishna, what's that? Karshna? Karshna. Karshna means you are. Krishna also says, my devotees, uh, what's that? Mai te te shu chape ham. I am in my devotees and devotees, I live and devotees live in me. What's exact? I forgot the translation. Uh, yeah, I live in, my, what's, how does it go? I live in my devotees and they live in me. I am in my devotees and they are in my. So Krishna says that. 
so uh, that's a philosophy krishna mukh bhakti so if we if we, if we become connected to krishna we are always thinking of serving krishna that that's how it goes if we are not really thinking of krishna we are thinking of serving him there's a there's a difference there uh, because because even 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 demons were thinking of krishna but they were not thinking of serving him that's the whole point even ravan and it 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 it's it said about kamsa kamsa was completely absorbed in krishna, krishna. he was he was so absorbed in bhagavatam doesn't say but other harivansh puran it, it 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 actually gives it graphically kamsa kamsa whenever he was so afraid of krishna that whenever he used to see a fan he used to think of chakra sudarshan oh chakra <laughs> Krishna. He was completely Krishna conscious in that sense. <laughs> and so, so, so whenever he used to see a fish in the aquarium, he used to think of Matsya Avatar. Wow. He'd say, my God, he'll take form of fish and Matsya Avatar will come and kill me. And so, so whenever he used to he used to see his sword, he used to think of Pashuram. He was thinking of all the Avataras. <laughs> day and night, day and night. He was completely absorbed. But the point is he was demon because he was thinking of god but he was not thinking of serving him that's a difference so for us service of krishna is higher than krishna okay. and who is service of krishna that's radha that's a philosophy so that's by the way that's a philosophy that is why radha is for us as gaudiya vaishnavas radha is uh, from the from the perspective of rasa vichar Uh, from the perspective of Mellows, she is higher than Krishna, not philosophically, but from Rasa Vichar. Why? Because she is service. She denotes an emblem of service. That's how it goes. And for us, service is greater than God. That's how. It is. So that is why you see from Gaudiya Vaishnavas, uh, for ordinary philosophers, uh, God is the highest thing. Vedam Vastavam Vastuvatra Vastra Shivadam. But for us, something is higher than God, and that is service. Or you can say love of God. That's mm. how it goes. And that's why Prabhupada. That's why Prabhupada says, "Krishna Prem Pumar Thoman." The aim of life is love of God, and not God. And by the way, uh, it is in philosophy also. It's not just from Rasa Vichar. If if you define who is an atheist and who is a theist, now, okay. So what's the definition of an atheist? Who doesn't believe in God? No, that's not the technical definition. If you read philosophy, that's not. If you read Vedas, that's not. They define who doesn't believe in God. From the prose, yeah. Huh? What is the prose? Yeah. It's just. That's not how Vedas define. Who doesn't believe in the existence? Uh, One of these material self gratification is all and all. An atheist is a person who doesn't believe in scriptures. No. That's how they define. Right. Philosophy defines a theist like that. Right. And a theist is a person who believes in scriptures. And that's very important because you can believe in God, but you can you might not believe in scriptures. And that's what most of the Hinduism is. Yeah. Okay, God is there, but they have no idea of scriptures. So in one sense, they they have a atheistic tendency. You can't call them. I mean to say, you can't really call them a theist also because at least they are coming to temple. But they're not theist in a strict sense. They have an atheistic tendency there. So, and that's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu defines shraddha. He Chaitanya Mahaprabhu does that, by the way. What is faith? Shraddha, shabde, vishwas kahe, sudhirada nischay. Faith is vishwas. In what? In scriptures. Shraddha, shabde. Shabde means scriptures, by the way. Shabde parecha nishnatam. Brahmani upasama ashrayam Bhagavatam says that Shabde Shabd the words of Vedas Shraddha means uh, to have faith in scriptures that's all faith like that so uh, that's how we define a atheist and atheist by the way if you go to South India if you go to Madhva Sampradaya or maybe Sri Vaishnavas uh, and they will ask you are you a theist or atheist and if you say I'm a theist they will ask you have you read bhagavad gita and if you say no have you read scriptures no then they'll give you a laddu and okay goodbye 
they like do i have want to you know <laughs> discuss with you you even don't know this basic you know you know these stories these you know scriptures when you talk to you yeah and then, the, then there's there's people who accept uh, the existence of god and accept the existence of scriptures but don't actually follow the scriptures so yeah that's well, a different thing yeah yeah so for all that Prabhupada in one purport in the Gita, you know, says those people are not in that. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, that's because, that's uh Yeah, because I mean if, if you're if you if you're saying the scripture is God's word but you don't give a damn it, about following it then yeah i think i think then we can i think we can say they have a demoniac mentality type yeah, yeah, so yeah. they're not like strictly in the bracket of demons yeah, that, that, that yeah that's, that's so why why it is said you believe in scriptures is is actually at least is a person who believes in scriptures why because scriptures will tell you the way to love god that's the whole point there just to believe in god is doesn't make you a theist because you don't know how to love him you don't know the process and the process is given in scriptures and that is why it is said to have faith in scriptures makes you a theist otherwise you are not theist because you don't know the process what do you do with vastu vastam vastu what do you do with a vastu if you don't know vedam mm-hmm. so you don't know how to do atra shivadam so that's the whole point krishna on mukh bhakti hoyte so when you become krishna on mukh when you become connected to krishna in his service then uh, maya mukta hoy then you become free of illusion that's what mahaprabhu is commenting this now the whole point is when we start serving krishna uh, maya will leave you that's all uh, why she will leave you because she is servant of god that's all she just actually maya will not leave you maya will be with you and start helping you that is the power of gauri vaishnavism by the way for yogis gyanis maya leaves them but for devotees maya starts serving devotees and that's what this whole movement is all about anasakta se vishayam yatharam upayanjita prabhasa yeah, uses and maya will start helping that's the that that's how it goes there and uh, and that's why uh, when chaitanya mahaprabhu used to see uh, oh, there's a verse jaha dekhi taha dekhai vrindavan shail dekhi manai govardhan the wherever if mahaprabhu used to see a mountain he used to think of govardhan he used to see a river he used to think of yamuna now chila prabhupada explains there in that perfect yeah, uh, just he explains he explains you see is chaitanya mahaprabhu having hallucinations okay what do you say about that he is seeing a mountain and he is thinking of govardhan is it hallucination no is he great no it should not be there there there's something it's not and and you can't say it's illusion because he is connected to god so it's a reality he is perceiving a reality now what is happening is maya is helping uh, devotees to make him think of krishna for us maya makes us forget krishna it is working antagonistically for devotees there's a prabhupad prabhupad i think yeah when prabhupad yeah, prabhupad was in la or somewhere i don't know, near the ocean and uh, prabhupad was going and then and then he was walking and then there was sound of waves crashing on the stone and then prabhupad stopped and prabhupad says this sound is like is the, is like is like crying of gopis he said he was remembering gopis there so how does it happen is prabhupada hallucinating is he imagining is in illusion no we can't say what is happening is ocean is is serving shri prabhupada the mm-hmm. whole nature starts serving pure devotee and they start helping him to to think about their lord better that's what the philosophy is otherwise otherwise you can simply say he's hallucinating and that doesn't work uh, every, everybody when who serves krishna every the whole nature starts serving him and they start helping him just like madhavin pur he was seeing a cloud and he was remembering krishna what's happening the cloud is serving madhavin puri that's all that's all we go and 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 and, and there is a technical term for that by the way prabhupada mentions there is a technical term for this 
that prakriti st starts serving a pure devotee and that technical term is uh, what's that um, prem by chitya mm. this is a sanskrit word prem by chitya in one of the purpose sharing proper mentions he sees something uh, or prem vivarth oh, you know this mm. prem vivarth mm. uh, prem vivarth is written by jagdanand pandit book mm. that actually are that 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 name is that that is a technical term prem vivarth the the nature starts mother nature starts uh, prakriti starts serving up your devotee and helping him to remember god that's how it goes so uh, that's krishna krishna on mukh bhakti hoyte maya mukt hoy that's what is uh, it doesn't just become free from maya uh, maya star becomes his servant that's that's the other way around and that's why propas propas said once propas said maya what is want to become god but we want to control god right isn't it propas said like nand maharaj is controlling god Rupa says, "So, what do you want? Do you want to become Maya Vadi or devotee?" <laughs> it's a, it's a very beautiful logic, and uh, Krishna submits himself to a devotee. So, Rupa says, "We want to become greater than God. That's mm -hmm. our philosophy." And Rupa, Rupa gives one of the lectures, and I was hearing, and beautiful, and he gives a whole lecture on control of God, and he ends the lecture by a statement. He says, "If you surrender to Krishna, if you love Him, Krishna will be in your fist." So. and we pause it jay prabhupad and it's it just, I, i just heard that and just went into my heart and it's a beautiful statement krishna will be in face i think only vaishnavs can speak this statement uh, there's others gyanis yogis they don't have even guts to speak that <laughs> and they don't even have that kind of courage to speak this kind of statement devotees speak that so this is the, that's why chaitanya mahaprabhu is making this point uh, when it comes to ittham bhuta Yeah. you know hari yeah he's commenting on that another point of what happens if you're not attracted to qualities of krishna what happens if you are attracted to qualities of krishna what's the what's the uh, what's the effect there and then he quotes from bhagavad gita from bhagavatam it's bhayam dvitiya vinishita swat uh, 11.2.37 from bhagavad gita it is devi hai shoguna mai mama maya duratiya mama prabadyante maya amitam charanti te 7.14 Uh, krishna himself says to cross illusion is almost impossible uh, mama maya duratiya it is his conclusion and if it is his conclusion it should be impossible <laughs> without his help it's very difficult so that's the whole point he's making uh, i think tomorrow we'll continue with that it's all in 9 o'clock it's 9 okay any body has any comments or prove even um if one of the uh, most poignant examples of um material energy helping a devotee is given in uh, the Hamsa Griya prayers oh okay um text 27 and 28 which are big it's basically this is uh, this chapter chapter 4 for for okay. um just from the actual Hamsa Griya I'll just read this selection slot uh, hmm. this particular part um The super soul is realized when one is eager for liberation from the limited varieties of material life. One actually attains such liberation when he engages in the transcendental loving devotional service of the Lord. He realizes the Lord because of his attitude of service. So Prabhupada writes a pretty substantial purport here, hmm. and he. ultimately uh utilizes the uh commentary Krishna Chakravarti Thakur on, on a famous Krishna Puran verse mm -hmm. he begins uh midway through by saying a pure devotee by devotional service is able to see the lord despite many material impediments which are all various energies of the supreme personality of god it easily making his way through these impediments mm -hmm. the devotee comes directly in contact with the lord after all the material impediments described in these verses are the various energies of the lord and then proper directs us to the shastra in five mm -hmm. the proper attitude mm -hmm. i.e. not to take mm -hmm. the wrong uh, please pick me up from the social mm -hmm. death and reinstate me being pleased with the devotee the lord turns all his material impediments into spiritual service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shri Vishwanath Chakravarti 
quotes Vishnu Purana, Ladini, Sandini, Sambit, Vai, Eka, I can't see very well, Sarva, Samsito, hmm. Lada, Lada Tapakari, this is the term that Prabhupada will explain, Mishra, Tvai, No, Guna, Varjati. In the material world, the spiritual energy of the Lord is manifested as tapakari, which means causing miseries. Everyone hankers for happiness, but although happiness is originally originally comes from the pleasure potency of the Lord in the material world, because of material activities, the pleasure potency of the Lord becomes a source of miseries. 